Monday Night Football. This one counts for two now. Let's go. Hey, let's jump on them quick. Play together. One heartbeat. Let's go now. Let's go. One, two, three. One, two, three. It's always a tough environment to go play there. A fun atmosphere. You know, Monday night will be a, a whole bunch of fun. You feel it when you walk into the stadium. You know, you kind of have that sense of the history of the game. It's pretty great to walk into a rivalry like we have. You know, they do a great job of playing, playing good at home. And uh, it's on us to go play, you know, a little bit better. That nostalgia just throws you right back into, you know, those old tapes and those old games that you've seen, you know, through the years. You know, whatever's been in the past is in the past. I'm worried about the Packers now. You know, they're different players, different different guys, different coaches, different schemes, and um, that's what we got to prepare for. Our first division game, Monday night. We understand that we have a very good team, so uh, we're coming out, we're attacking, we're coming out with full confidence, we're coming out trying to win every game, and we're trying to win big. Carry on 30, carry on 25. I love playing at Lumbo Field. Marvin Jones, oh, what a catch! Did he catch it? You bet, touchdown Detroit Lions! Looks down, pressure comes, gonna get hit, gonna go down! You know, um, I think with all rookies, um, and he's a young player, um, you know, you, you always try to tread those waters and, and really learn about the guy. You know, I think the, the college mentality may be a little bit different because there are so many guys and they just kind of, you know, go back out there for us. You know, we as we get towards those active rosters, you know, those 46 guys, um, there's a lot of conversations that need to go on because it affects other positions and things like that. So, um, you know, when, you, when you're learning about young players and injuries and how they handle them, and especially with the concussion because it's so kind of unpredictable from that standpoint, you really try to just be observant, be aware, um, see if there's anything different. And I think just my own personal experience with those things uh, as you go through and you deal with players or, or you know, um, when you're playing or whether you're coaching, uh, you're just trying to look for small subtleties. You know, there might be situations where um, – Guy looks good, he feels okay, and all that stuff. But maybe you, as a coach, or you, as a friend, or you, as a uh, teammate, start to see something that maybe just a little bit different. So you just try to be really aware. You know, we're always trying to do what's best for the player and, and keep everybody protected. And you know, thankfully, we have a great protocol that I think all the teams are using really well right now to kind of keep a gauge on that stuff. But you just want to make sure they're okay. And then you know, the other part that's unpredictable is that sometimes. Um, Things may be fine, and then they may come up like two or three days later. It's, you know, it's just so kind of uncharted territory. So for a guy like TJ to kind of go back to the question is just really just trying to be observant with him as we learn him, you know, as a young guy. But he's been, uh, you know, he loves football. He's he's all in on football. You know, what I mean, he's just one of those kids that just absolutely loves. It. You appreciate that, and sometimes with those guys, you got to really. Um, Sometimes they're young guys, sometimes they're older guys. You got to almost protect them from themselves at some point, you know, and just make sure that they're okay because that's the most important thing. If anybody was in the concussion protocol, was there like a day of game recheck just to make sure once they no, once I think once the doctors finally get through it, you know, maybe we're a little bit extra cautious as coaches. You know, um, I think it's always a good philosophy of ours, even in game. To be honest with you. Um, you know, there's all the protocols and all that stuff, but even in game, if something happens, I'll always make sure, like as a coach, uh, you go grab your your player or as a head coach and say, ask them something relevant to the game, game plan, something from the week that we practiced, something that you know, 
is going to be a little bit more advanced than maybe what a general question would be to a particular guy. So um, for me, uh, I think that's really important. You know, I think it's uh, I've had situations before in the past where, you know, guys like, hey, I think he's OK. And then I talk to him like, I don't think this guy's OK. And I'm not, you know, I'm going to go. I'm going to put somebody else in there just because, you know, you're trying to protect those guys and you're trying to protect them. You know, like I said, sometimes from themselves. You talked about it last week, but did you address the hurdling thing again this week or you know, go over that with the guys? I think they got a pretty good point of that last week uh, in general. We'll see. Uh, we'll see when the, uh, the game hits. Um, sometimes those guys are, you know, they're, they're trying to do the right things. I think we all understand the, the dangers with some of that stuff. Um, I do understand their point of it, too, uh, with some of the uh, lower body uh, risk situations that they're in right now currently and, and they're trying to you know protect themselves from that too so I do understand all that and I'm not out there playing so I'm not in that situation I can't really um, you know do that but I think we just again continual education of understanding the injuries and the risks and all that stuff is what's really most important w whatever it is and in that particular case uh, I think we saw you know they saw that last week when to, when not to, and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of examples of it, you know, through the course of the, of um, a weekend and in the NFL, you know, even in college too. If you, you know, if you can grab some of that film and track that, uh, and just try to show them, like, hey, if you're setting something up and um, you know you think you see this, then you know it's a calculated risk. At that point is really good. I think some of the last minute decisions on those, where you're kind of reactionary, are uh, definitely is your body protecting itself. Um, so you see some of that sometimes. Um, I think understanding where you are, if you're inside, if you're outside, you know, grass versus turf is different. I think also, um, you know, situations certainly where, you know, sometimes you gotta learn how to fall. You know, it's kind of sounds silly, but sometimes that's what you gotta do. You know, you gotta learn how to protect yourself as you go down. So um, real hard to kind of pinpoint it and give them a, a, a concrete, like this is the answer because it's not, you know, everything is reactionary from that standpoint. Everybody's a little bit different, but you know, there are, there are a lot of low shots where those guys are trying to protect themselves on some of that stuff. and. Um, you know, certainly for me, from my standpoint, um, as, a, as a head coach, I'm trying to also coach the other side of it. You know, this is why we don't want to do that. This is why we don't want to go low. You know, the heads are down here. Like, we got to keep the heads up. We got to see what we hit. We got to be protected. We want to be, you know, in a safe hitting position on the football field. So I think it's, for us, a way to coach, and we're always trying to coach safety. Uh, those examples are, you can really identify both sides of it and really coach it hard just to get them to understand why, like why you don't want to do this or why this position is dangerous. And um, that's the most important thing because, you know, again, like I said, um, it, injuries are never good. But as a, as a coach, when you got to walk out on that field and try to see what's going on, that's, that's no one wants to be there. And you've, got, well, you've got 12 straight games. You talked a little bit about this last week, but when you've got 12 straight, yeah. do you start to maybe manage practice differently and manage – certain guys differently if they maybe have a slight injury versus sure. a bigger one. Like, do you handle that differently because of the yeah. earlier body? Yeah, I think as a head coach, I, I definitely try to take a look at that overall structure of everything as we go forward. Um, sometimes the position coaches, uh, and I was in the same situation, you're just trying to coach and, and, and get going. Um, so what I'll try to do, you know, and you, you do a little bit before the season, the same thing like we did in training camp. Like we kind of marked some areas in training camp where I thought I could give guys rest. Uh, the bye week, you know, it, it was kind of interesting how it fell this year with the first four games. So we look at the season in quarters, just kind of how you look at it. It's easy that way. Um, and then so we're going to look at the next four games, you know, in the next, the next quarter of the season. The interesting part of it for us, which is awesome and wonderful, is that we also know we have the Thanksgiving, you know, uh, Thursday. So... Uh, we try to target, you know, another date in there where potentially we could get some extra rest. And then also knowing that, uh, again, a little bit different with the Monday night game and then the Thursday game, what those weeks of practice are going to look like, you know, from a structure standpoint, a stress standpoint. Um, mentally, they're going to be very taxing, but obviously physically we need to recover and get ready for the next week coming off a Monday night game or, you know, getting ready for a Thursday game. So there are kind of a couple little breaks in there physically that we can kind of count on. Um, I think in general, if guys are dinged up or, you know, again, because they're playing an NFL football season right now, they're going to have some of those injuries. You try to monitor it more on an individual basis um, and also maybe even by a uh, team period, individual, just, you know, you can do it segmented, uh, segmented by practice. So like portions in practice, hey, this is really good. Let's pull off here. Let's go back there and kind of just make sure that they're getting the looks they need to see. Digging into some of your special team stats yesterday, just looking at Jalen Reed's available number. One of the things I noticed is you guys had more kickoffs brought back against you than, than any team in the NFL. I'm just wondering, we know San Martin's got the ability to, to boom it back yep. consistently. Have you guys found maybe a, a sweet spot with your, your coverage where you, uh, you're you going to determine week to week, I guess, for return man, but uh, 
where you're, you're comfortable and confident in trying to force guys to return it and getting those extra couple of yards of field position? Yeah, I definitely would say, you know, the second part of what you just said is critically important for us in those situations. If we, you know, weigh the, the returner versus the rest of the situation of the game, those are sometimes things that we, we take a look at is when we want to either bang it through the end zone or, or try to, you know, um, put it in a difficult situation to handle. Um, sometimes like, you know, just even ball security, ball handling, things like that. If we're trying to put guys in tough situations, if we're outside, if we're inside, um, you know, the start of the uh, Philly game, if you kind of, you know, we're looking at it, the sun was really kind of a little bit of an issue too, you know, with those situations. And some of those things factor into it. Lights sometimes can factor into it. So you try to, you know, put all that in there. And I think for us, we just maintain the mentality of uh, practicing our coverage units and making sure we're ready to go. Uh, and we've certainly seen teams this year where uh, even if you're trying to bang it through the end zone, those guys are grabbing them, you know, deep and they're trying to bring them out, you know. And so we just always have to be ready for that. And if we feel comfortable that that's part of the game that uh, will be good for us, then we'll try to do that. Good. All right. Great. Appreciate it. Thanks. In a big division matchup. Uh, I don't get too far. I mean, I'm already fired up on any day, given any day, on a Sunday. I think I'm fired up. The same Monday through Sunday. So ain't no big difference on what time the game is. But I wish it was Sunday. So uh, my weekend lasts longer. But now we got to come to a Monday game and turn back around have a Sunday game. Ah, I'll be tired. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, there's a lot of energy, isn't there, always with uh, surrounding a Monday night game? I mean, from the stands, the fans, just. Nah, 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 nah. Same energy. Seriously? Yeah, I'll be chilling. I feel like the way you guys have, have performed in the back end there. Great. Uh, You've been great. Uh, Coleman, it looks like you guys are a pretty good group. Yeah, we good. We good. We, uh, we battling every play. We left plays out there on the field, but we're going to get them back. So uh, but we continue to keep fighting, keep playing ball. Uh, we compete at a high level every week. Um, we just go out there and try to execute our job. How are they different if Devontae Adams doesn't play? Huh? How are they different if Devontae doesn't play? I don't really – I mean, like I said, it's Aaron Rodgers out there. He's, uh, I don't, I don't think he matter, matter, I don't think he matter who he's throwing it to. So, uh, but uh, you know, if he ain't out there, oh well, beat it. If he is, oh well. It's, you know, uh, I pray for his health, his concerns, uh, because at the end of the game, this game is physical. So I wish him the best of his luck and recovery. You know, I hope he's recovering properly. But um, I mean, uh, I don't think it'll make no. I ain't gonna say he's not an X factor. He's a big X factor. But it's just that. Yeah, yeah, he's great. He good as he good. Real good. He top one of the top guys in the league. So, sh but uh, it's just the fact that Aaron Rodgers is is the guy too. He a guy, 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 guy. He got like ten guys. So, you know. Uh, but yeah, man, I, I'm praying for his health and hope he uh, hope he's out there. But uh, you know, if he's not, uh, continue to keep praying for his health and uh, see him soon. Hopefully. You were I think, after that game last year. I think you were pretty down on your performance again. I went down on my performance. I just like okay, he won. He won a battle. You know. And, uh, that was a good battle. He won that one, but I got the win, the dub. So, but uh, we talk about it all the time, man. We pretty cool, but uh, you know, he knew my moves. Uh, huh? You and Adams are pretty cool. Oh yeah, we pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, of course. You know, we we, we kick, we kick it. But uh, pretty good guy, man. So uh, he talented. But yeah, he got the best of me last year. You know, did a good job with that. I was looking forward to the last year of the game. He didn't play to get my revenge, but uh, we see how that go. How, how are you? How's the hamstring feeling? Next one. <laughs> you, well, this so defense has done pretty well against elite quarterbacks. Is that is that the scheme? Is that how you guys get up for elite quarterbacks? You've sh shut a few of them down. I mean, oh, I, to be a quarterback in this league, I think you got to be elite almost. So we just some of that different level of elite. Definitely this one. Very, 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 very elite. That's a lot. Uh, but uh, I, we, like I said, we are we always up for the challenge, man. It's uh, I feel just like the battle. It's fun. It's a fun game. It's a fun sport. We just go out there, have fun, and go play ball. You said with Devontae, you know, you were looking forward to getting him back last year and got hurt in that second game. Were you kind of hoping he plays this week so you can maybe get him back? This Who? Week? Adam, Devontae, that is? Oh, uh, yeah. It was always a battle. You know what I'm saying? I love going against him. We've been rivalries for so long. Well, not rivalries, like real rivalries, but we just go against each other for so long. And I know he's one of the top guys. He make me better every week. Every time I go against him, uh, I'm sure I make him better. And uh, I'm just trying to be, you know, continue to keep being great. So you said you, you guys have talked about that before. Oh yeah, what, we talk about say, it. What did he say to you? What did he say to him? When you huh? Talk, you and Javante, what did he say? About I told, him? I told the whole world. I said, man, this is the only guy that gave me a hundred. So uh, I got much respect for him. Like much respect, man. It was every play. We was grinding, battling. He made a lot of tough catches. Uh, you know, 50-50 balls. He, he made the plays on that he needed to make, and uh, he did that for his team. And uh, I just said, you know, me, me being a competitor, I just want to win my battle back. I just want my rematch back. Got a butt back.
<laughs> Got to go back. So you be, I mean, do you want him to play then Monday? So that would oh, of course I want him to play Monday. But, you know, like I said, I ain't, I don't want to, like, oh, I need to play Slate for a compete because I'm concerned. Like, you know, he's a he's a good friend of mine. You know, I want him to be healthy, and I want him to be 100% for, uh, for this battle. Darius, you guys are, you guys are allowing second lowest quarterback completion percentage in the league. Yeah. It's the lowest on third down. Just curious why you think they did that. Why you guys have Say again? You guys as a defense have held yeah. quarterbacks to uh -huh, the second uh -huh. lowest completion percentage and the lowest on third down. And I'm just curious why you think you guys are having so much success on that. Man, we be on the ass. That's why we got so much success on it. We know what we got going on. We be on the ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we be locking up. We uh we already know third down, money down. We gotta get off the field. That's how you make your money. Uh Play first and second down, you know, you do your job, but third down, money down. We got to get off this field because uh, more time the offense got the ball, more points they could put up. So we're trying to make it difficult for offense. When is Rodgers the most dangerous? People say when oh, he's rolling he out. Does it, it doesn't matter. No? It doesn't matter. He's dangerous when they put the ball down and say height. <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It don't matter. It doesn't matter. When he shot out there on the field, like, oh, it's go time. That's how it be. How many other quarterbacks you feel that way about? Oh man, who I feel that about? Yeah. Ooh, back in the time was uh, Tom, uh, for sure Tom Brady, yeah. Peyton Manning. Ooh, not a lot of guys coming up here to be elite too. Now y'all, like, a lot of young guys. So Patrick Mahomes, he young guy. It's a whole bunch of great quarterbacks. I mean, I can't just name all of them, but, but it's a lot. It's, it's only but a few. Be like, it doesn't matter what you kind of do. They kind of like they don't seen it all done. It all. It's mostly the older guys because they don't seen every. Everything in the book. The young guys still learning, but they're gonna be great though. Like Watson, he's gonna be a great player. You no, know, so, but overall, the, it's mostly the old heads, goat man. The goats they talk about, Drew Brees, awesome. <laughs> yeah. Does it make it especially harder because they're running back to Aaron Jones? He's really come on of late. That has to make it even more difficult. Man, you know, for him, Aaron's. I'm telling you, for him to be so little and so short on film, he is running so hard. <laughs> So, uh, but credit to them and the old line, because at, at one point in time, that was they, not their strength, is running the ball, and he kind of filled that need for them, and uh, he's doing a great job at it, you know. So we got, we sure got our eyes on him for sure. Thanks, Roy.